anointing is a system that legitimizes the operation of a believer. It is like your authorization to represent his majesty in this side of his kingdom. We did observe also that the anointing is God's ability at work in a human or a material vessel to produce God's dimension of results. The Bible says it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous. It is only marvelous when it is the Lord's doing. If it is man's doing, it is natural. You don't clap for me for walking. But when a man begins to fly, it is not given to men ordinarily. And so you know that that is now a supernatural dimension. Are we together? And I did observe yesterday night that there are requirements. We call them a prize. There is a prize for the anointing. When you really, really want to access the anointing of the Holy Spirit, there is a prize. And the prize is hidden in a statement in Proverbs chapter 23. We'll pick it up from there. Proverbs 23, please help us media. And verse 26. The first prize for the anointing upon the life of a believer is captured in the mystery of the first two words, my son, my son. The first prize for the anointing is intimacy, relationship. You cannot be anointed from afar. So he has to draw you to the place of sonship that the anointing is the business of a family. It is a family affair. You cannot host the anointing of the Holy Spirit being a stranger. He says, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. So when God is beckoning on men to obtain and to receive the anointing, his first clarion call is not to come and receive. It is my son. Come closer. Move closer to the place of intimacy. Past the gates of church. Past the gates of religion. Past the gates of man of God and woman of God. Past the gates of apostle and prophet and teacher and all of these things. Come to a place of intimacy and fellowship. Price number one. Price number two. We established yesterday still the same scripture. So please give it to us. It says, my son, give me your heart. That is the second requirement. Surrender. The first price is the price of intimacy and fellowship with God. The second price is the price of total, absolute, unreserved surrender. You may have heard me say it in my teachings that the price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is not your offering. No. Not your intellect. No, that's too small. The price for all of God is all of you. When you want all of God, what you give, the, the payment is all of you. Are we together? So price number one, my son, intimacy, draw close. The Bible says, no eye hath seen, Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The Bible says what God has prepared, not for prayer warriors, not for fasting giants, not for ministers, for them that love him. And then number three, for this service, the third prize is let your eyes observe my ways. So price number one, my son, build intimacy. Price number two, give me your heart. Total surrender. Price number three, let your heart observe my ways. Let your heart observe my ways. I think it's Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. Please give it to us. Let me just confirm that it's that scripture very powerful scripture, Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 3 and then 4. I wish we can have amplified. Is it, is it possible to have amplified? The media, beautiful. If we can have amplified, just give us just for 3 and 4. Now watch this. It said, God approaching from Sinai came from Teman. And the Holy One from Mount Paran. It says, His glory covered the heavens and the earth. 
was full of his praise. Read verse 4 and never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Let's go together when we have it. One to read. And his brightness was like the sunlight. Rays streamed from his hand. And there in the sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power. So God's power has a location. His power hides in his light. Are we together now? So when he says, observe my ways, my power is hidden in my ways. The light and the illumination that comes from knowing my ways is where your power and your authority comes from. I did share yesterday that the word of God is like a tray and it carries all the possibilities that can come in God on top of it. So when his word is coming to you, you celebrate the word not because of the word in itself, but its ability to carry everything God. When the word of God comes to you, in that word is your healing. In that word is your deliverance. In that word is your breakthrough. Are we together? The Bible says in that light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power. Lord, where is your power? Is hidden in my light. So when I want to make you powerful, I come to you as light. That spiritual illumination. Please listen to me. Most people have not been able to walk in kingdom power and authority because there is so much spiritual information in the body of Christ, but very few people have access to what the Bible calls the mysteries of the kingdom. Please pay attention. Not every spiritual information is for the profiting of the saints. Just because it is spiritual does not mean it will profit you. When you study the world's religion, every one of them is shrouded in secrets and mysteries that have their origin from the realm of the spirit. So celebrating spiritual information does not mean you have enlightenment. This is where I believe the pride of our generation lies. We pride ourselves in the fact that we have scarce spiritual information. And we think just because this information is not science-based, that means we are powerful. It's not necessarily so. When you ask people who practice occultism, their entire life is immersed in spiritual information. When you ask people who practice voodoo, and practice all of, there is none of them that is ignorant as far as spiritual information is concerned. Moses, before he met the God of the Bible, was more learned than most Christians. He was being trained to be the next Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was, Egypt was the center of both science and wizardry. So he was not in ignorance. Today, there are still books that Moses wrote before he met God. There were archives of his dealings. And those books today are used in the occult. Are we together now? I know you know what I'm talking about. There, there are books that were written by Moses before he met the God of the Bible. There were an archive of his education. His tutorials were recorded. And there are still people using it today. Because for you to become a pharaoh in Egypt, you had to be a wizard, not a man. Those teachings will change you from being a man into a wizard. That's why God had to train Moses to go back and meet Pharaoh. Because the then Pharaoh would, was his half-brother, Ramesses. So when Moses came back and said, let my people go, he said, Moses, you know these things. We were trained together. You want to die for nothing? You just meet this God in a forest and come to meet Egypt, the center of wizardry. So what token did he give you in the wilderness? And he threw his staff and Pharaoh laughed and said, shame on you. You have forgotten that this is a place of witchcraft. You come to scare us with a snake. Janus, Jambers, come and show this man that this place is also a center of wizardry. And they threw their rods too. They didn't pray on it. They all stopped talking and allowed their revelations to keep speaking. This is not my sermon. I'm just, I'm just encouraging us.
there are many dimensions of useless spiritual information that does not profit the saints, neither advance the cause of the kingdom. Most of this information came as a result of the pride of men to search what seems to give them an edge. But these things, that's why the Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. There are books today that have been written that are deceiving the body of Christ because these books did not come under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. They just came after men who wanted to just move forward in life. And some of these people sincerely so, some of them. There are people who have gone for prayer and fasting programs and encountered demonic spirits that downloaded all kinds of supernatural things supposedly. And these things continue to confuse the body. Let your eyes observe. Not just see, observe. Because there are many things that will look like it, but it's not it. Let your eyes observe my ways. Are we blessed this morning? We're discussing the anointing. If Janus and Jambers can turn a rod to a serpent, that means they can make someone stand up from the wheelchair too. Do you agree with me? I'm not being critical. That means they can program a climate of favor on your shop too. And in one day, you will get from your shop what you had not gotten in one year. So what then is the need for the Holy Spirit? What then is the need for the anointing? Look at the story of Moses. The Bible says when the serpents were on the ground, seeing that they were both serpents, pressure came upon the integrity of Elohim and he caused a serpent, the serpent of Moses, to swallow the rod. Do you know what that meant? No magic again. Because those rods you see were not ordinary rods. You couldn't do magic without them. Now he swallowed it and yet did not increase in size. And said, you explain this mystery. That I ate another rod. Master over time and matter. He demonstrated there that I am Lord of the universe. Are we together? We become powerful in this kingdom when we understand the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom activate the power of God in the life of the saints. Please understand this. We are a power generation. We like power and that's wonderful. We like miracles, signs, wonders, manifestations manifestations of the spirit and, and there's nothing wrong with that in itself except for the fact that most people do not want to pay the price to sit with scripture and understand the doctrine of scripture and the truth upon which our faith is built and not knowing this will make you to misuse the anointing and sometimes not even access it at all are we together now? Yes. The imbalances in the misuse of the anointing is because believers do not know the ways of God. I'll give you an example. Let's assume for instance that I am prophesying to say this man of God. And the Lord opens my eyes in the realm of the spirit. And I suddenly look at a man of God dressed, beautifully dressed in white suit and I see a horn on him or I see something demonic. Now you see, that vision is God attempting to show me something. But my understanding of scripture should already reveal to me the character of God and how he operates which should inform the way I will interpret that vision. If I am not grounded in the word, I'm just going to say what I see. And saying what I see in the hearing of natural men will mislead them. I did not see wrong, but my not knowing the ways of God did not culture my interpretation. So it ends up creating another error. And I am surprised that while I am prophesying, people are leaving God. Are we together? For instance, when I look at this man and I see what looks like evil, I know 
know according to scripture that the believer has been given the ministry of reconciliation. Number two, it is not God's desire. Listen to me. It is not in the character of God to watch a man have a challenge in his life and then allow that man to just go and die in perdition, especially that he's a preacher of the gospel. Are we together now? So I know that God may be showing me something that may be wrong with this man's foundation. It does not mean the man is evil. It is left for me now to use the lens of scripture and doctrine in my administering the power of God. Sometimes it may require for the sake of those he has influence over to see him in private. Because delivering this message in an attempt to reveal God's counsel will demean his leadership and his influence. All this one now is not the anointing. It is your understanding of scripture. Our fathers and the patriarchs that have gone, you know, many of them have gone to be with the Lord. They access strange dimensions of the anointing. Some of them while praying in the forest, fasting, they encountered God in many great ways. And because some of them were not educated in as much as we know education to be, and then some of them did not have the opportunity to be enlightened, their limitations intellectually affected their dispensing of the anointing. Many of them, what the anointing upon them could do, they never were able to do it in their lifetime because knowledge did not give space for the multifaceted dimensions of the anointing in them to find expression. Now, when you come and receive the same anointing they had, it will look like you receive something greater, but your knowledge now gives it more expression. Let your eyes observe my way. If someone comes to you now and says, Apostle or Pastor, I'm in a financial trouble. If all you know is just anointing, you will just lay hands on him and say, in the name of Jesus, it is done. Because of the dimension of the prophetic at work in you, he will get a breakthrough, but he will not be blessed. He will get that breakthrough for a while and solve the current problem, but sustainably, He's not going to increase because there are principles that are responsible for sustainable increase. And since you have just limited him to the prophetic operation of the anointing, he will keep coming back to you every time he's in trouble. Are we together? My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Jesus was training the disciples and like I told you yesterday, you will never see the mention of anointing maybe more than two or three times in the entire gospel. No. The beatitudes, the teachings of the kingdom. Yet he was preparing all these people to carry his anointing. And you do not hear mention of anointing in his lectures. He was just teaching them. You, you your eye is the light of the body. You are a city set on a hill. This, your law says this, but this is what I now say. When he had now prepared them, to the point that when he rose again, he didn't even have time to celebrate his victory. He said, guys, let's go back and have lectures. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is coming upon you, and I must finish what I'm teaching you. Let him not come upon minds that are not enlightened. And when he was done with them, he said, Tari, 10 more days. And that power comes upon you. Listen to me. When God wants to truly anoint you, he brings you to the school of the spirit and teaches you the ways of God. Not the anointing. The ways of God. Are we together? He teaches you the ways of God. That is the mystery of the making of men. He says, follow me and I will make you. He makes you and then empowers you. If you do not submit to his making and the making comes through the word, he builds you up, empowers you. The light from that illumination now strengthens you 
And when that engracing comes, you become a cutting edge battle axe because you have been thoroughly furnished in the spirit. Excesses of imbalance out of your life. The side effect of manifesting the anointing without the word is error and imbalance. When you become a dispenser of the anointing and you are not guided by the coordinates of the word. Look at me. I hope you know in the parable of the ten virgins, the oil was trapped inside the lamb. The oil found is relevant provided it was inside the coordinates of the lamb. And that lamp is the word of God. So the oil finds expression provided it is trapped in that container of the lamb. If all you have is oil, it will not profit you. The oil's relevance is found when it is inside the lamb. Are we together now? Yes. It says, go and meet them that sell. Buy oil. Put it in your lamp. Then the lamp will continue to burn, strengthened by the oil. The whole goal is not the oil. The whole goal is not the lamp. The goal is light. But the dynamics of that light is the union of the oil and the lamp. Let your eyes observe my ways. Very quickly, why do we need the anointing? Let me just rush to touch on these areas because we are discussing the anointing. Why do we need the anointing? It's important for us to understand why we need the anointing. Why does the believer need the anointing? Number one, to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom. Why do we need the anointing? That engracing of the spirit to subdue the forces of darkness that war against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom. Psalm 16. 6 and verse 3 say unto God it says how terrible art thou in your ways Psalm 66 and verse 3 through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you not through your being alive not through your being a preacher scripture did not leave us in the dark ladies and gentlemen as to the fact that the whole all war lies in wickedness. It is true. An uncomfortable truth. But it is true. That our world is a wicked place. There are spirits. That predate the existence of men. In fraternity with men. To destroy destinies. And to sabotage ultimately. The purposes of God. And it takes the power. And the anointing of the Holy Holy Spirit to subdue them. Isaiah 10 and verse 27. It says it shall come to pass on that day. Please give it to us. It shall come to pass on that day. Isaiah chapter 10 27. That the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder. If it is taken away God did not put it there. It says and the yoke from off your neck. If you have both a yoke and a burden upon you. Already that will impede your advancement. And it says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There are yokes that sit upon the lives and the destinies of people. When Jesus came, making his own manifesto in Luke chapter 4, we make reference to that also in Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy. Please give it to us. Let's read the first four verses. Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God, he says, is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me for these. Number one, to preach good tidings to the poor. It takes the anointing to preach good tidings to the poor. It takes more than sympathy. It takes more than empathy. It takes the anointing of the spirit. 
Number two, he had sent me, authorized me by the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted. KJV, please. And then number three, to proclaim liberty, it says, thank you, to the captives. You don't proclaim liberty just because you have a voice. Be free. No, that when you announce that, there is an anointing that can break every yoke and set the captives free. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison. My goodness, my God. That means there are human beings who are walking, Bishop, on earth, moving physically, yet in the realm of the spirit, there are doors and prisons locking them. There are families, sincere people. They can travel to the U.S., come back, travel to the um, U.K., come back, go all around the world, have all their education or whatever it is but according to the revelation of scripture they are locked up in prison houses waiting for the anointing to open that door can I tell you this time does not open the door it's the anointing that opens it you can be in that prison door give birth to your children in that prison give birth to your grandchildren in that prison but I come in the name of Jesus this morning by the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit that everyone here every family locked up and chained in all kinds of prisons in the name of Jesus listening and following online from whatever nation and here in Asaba I declare by the Spirit of God for that door that has been closed Ephata be opened now be opened now sit down it is because the prison door is closed that's why you can be looking at your destiny helper he's close to you yet you don't know there is a divide between you and him he can bless and help everybody around you and say come back please be sensitive this morning we came for very serious business give us back that scripture please Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. These are the things the anointing does. To appoint unto them that mourn. I like this. Do you know what this means? Set a date for their deliverance. It doesn't mean announce. Set a date. You can call their deliverance today and it will happen. To appoint unto them that morning Zion. It says to give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise. For what? The spirit of heaviness. That they might be called oaks or trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified in their lives. Verse 3, verse, okay, verse 4 now. And they shall build the old wastes. So it takes the anointing that what my father could not do. I once heard that there was greatness in this family. I once heard that we were great people. That this family had men and women of God, men of fire. That when the missionaries came, this was the family that supported them. But right now, there is almost no one who believes in God in this family. It says to build back the old ways. To say, no way. We must get back to the spiritual heritage. There are many of you, you go back to the archives in your family and you find out that your your grandparents were part of the cutting edge activity of the spirit but as it is now there is almost no one aside from you that calls upon the name of the Lord to build back the old waste it says they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the waste cities the desolations of many generations all by the anointing all by the anointing so we need the anointing to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the kingdom of God. Look up please, let me tell you this. 
if the average believer is ever aware at the schemings of darkness over your life, that alone will motivate you to take God seriously. I think that because of now, I, I, I don't mean to insult technology and our you know secular living, I have profound respect for it, but I think most believers have been blinded at the reality. If, if a legion of demons were in one man, one. There are only about maybe six to eight billion people as we know today now on earth, roughly speaking. That is child's play relative to the number of demons and spiritual forces that are on earth. That is what? Child's play. That means there are enough spirits to be assigned per destiny. Satan has not hidden his hatred for anything God, including you. So when you stood to give your life to Christ, you are not the only one that witnessed your salvation. The gates of darkness saw this. So finally, this family now has one person who has stood to say, I am for Jesus. And not only me, when you were praying with your wife and saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It was not only you in that room. And it was not angels alone. The realm of the spirit was watching your prayer and they were hearing your confession and they said all right you have drawn the line and we walk carelessly just believing that in some way my life I will excel just like that when Jesus finished fasting the first person he saw was not an angel the first person he saw was Satan Satan left the whole world and was waiting patiently for 40 days. There are some fastings that don't just drive demons. It makes them to say what is happening in Asaba. We, we, there is a signal, an unusual angelic activity is happening somewhere in Asaba. Who is that person burning the incense of prayer? It's not everything that just drives demons. There are things that call them. Your giving, your sacrifice, the realm of the spirit is responding. And they want to come and find out who is this? And they say it's a pastor. Pastor. They check the archives in the spirit. We've not had the mention of pastor in this family. Where is this coming from? It's coming from a young man who has covenanted with God that he will be a liberator of his family. And he says, draw the line. Whatever it would take, whether it's an accident, whether it's a destruction, he said, whatever it would to, to, you know, all those kinds of things. And then scheme it to destroy him. Ah! But in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I say it again, that every force sitting on anyone's destiny, I'm not motivating you. I stand by the God who called me. And I declare in the name of Jesus that there are Power is broken over your life. Broken over, help them please. Help that lady. Broken over your family. Please help them. In the name of Jesus, I set on fire everything that is not of the Christ. I destroy every yoke. I stand and by the God of heaven and through the voice of prophecy I arrest every spirit I arrest every ordinance speaking against you please sit down he laughs sala parusa siya katabaranda katosia shkatabala katosiata just pray in the spirit in one minute where you are seated Mm, fire is burning in this place. Enough is enough. It's time for destinies to shift. It's time for lives to change. It's time for that which was spoken concerning your life. Man of God, are you praying? Enough is enough. It's time to see the power. 
the grace and the glory of God. It's time for that which was written concerning me to speak. Are they men of prayer in Asaba? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down and be sensitive. Please give me volume, Elijah. Number two, why do you need the anointing? Mm. To fulfill your divine assignment and advance the kingdom of God. The second reason why you need the anointing is to fulfill your divine assignment. Hear me, thank God for skill. Thank God for your abilities. Thank God for your human potentials. But in this kingdom, human potentials can only take us so far. You cannot do kingdom assignments ultimately in the strength of the flesh. You will need an empowerment from heaven. Are we blessed? Yes. You cannot heal the sick set the captives free, fulfill your God-given assignment just using the force of intellect, just using the force of secular knowledge. Thank God for your education. Thank God for your exposure. But in all your getting, get authentic spiritual power. anointing only the anointing can produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction only the anointing can produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction your ability cannot produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction Only the anointing. I can tell you this without humility. In my little work with God and in ministry, not to brag, forgive me if I sound arrogant, but I have seen wonders in the lives of people. I have seen God do things that are all inspiring. And I go back and I know the difference between me and the anointing. I can disconnect myself from that result and I know this one, you have nothing to do with it. The sea did not part for Elijah. The sea parted for whoever carried that mantle. It was not about Elijah. It was about the career of that mantle. When Elisha carried it and came and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Are you blessed this morning? Yes, sir. sir. Hear me. God wants to give you rest. There are many of us, you are sincere people, but I bring you to a dimension where you stop doing things in the flesh. You are doing business in the flesh. You will be angry and you will hate successful people for the rest of your life because you will try to attract customers and even your own tribes people will leave you. It is Whoever accesses an advantage from the realm of the spirit who exerts dominion here. Great men and women of God, 
It takes more than a good Bible study to have God honor you and increase you and have people come to listen to the counsel of God upon your lips and to have a generation honor and acknowledge the workings of God upon you. It takes more than that. There is a dimension of grace. An angel of the Lord is pouring oil on this lady. This lady with hands on her mouth. I'm seeing oil. And the Lord is saying he's shifting you to a new dimension in the spirit. I stretch my hands now. You step into that dimension in the spirit. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set my heart on you. So you do what you do. We need me. We need a This season Come and watch it too. in the spirit and I'm seeing doors just opening this is what I'm seeing in the spirit I'm seeing doors these are doors of destinies that have been closed this is what the Lord is showing me in the spirit I believe that some of them are here doors ancient doors this is what I'm seeing in the spirit that's why I started singing that song some of these doors are doors of ministry. You have done what you know to do. You are sincere, serving God with all your heart. But it looks like these doors do not want to open. My friend, shout Jesus as loud as you can you yes I stretch my hands upon you new dimension in the spirit you will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ Lord let the doors be open let the doors be open. I don't know whose door this is, but in the name of Jesus, my God is telling me that these doors are opening. I open them prophetically by the anointing. Age long doors that have refused to open. For some of the doors, we don't just open them, we break the doors so that they are never closed again. He has the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. We break those
those doors. Help that lady. We break those doors. We are here. Let's sit down. Let's sit down. We're about to pray now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, for this session we are entering in, just be sensitive. If someone is under the anointing close to you, please help them. Hallelujah. Maybe for this session, we'll just take one more. How to receive the anointing. Please pay attention. Be sensitive. How to receive the anointing. Everything receivable can be rejected. Someone at the back in this room. I just saw light. I said, lady, the power of God is coming on that person. I just saw light. I don't know who that is. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the Spirit, please, when you find that person under the anointing, please bring them out. In the name of Jesus, light by the Spirit. The Lord is bringing an end to captivity. Hear me, except God is not God. Whatever followed you and brought you here, I stand by the God whom I serve and whose I am, that it will never follow you back. It will never follow you back. It will never follow you back. Please sit down. How to receive the anointing? Hmm. Number one. There are two main biblical platforms for receiving the anointing. Number one, directly from God, through an encounter or through his word. Write it down. Number one, directly from God, through a supernatural encounter or through his word, just like we have observed. You can be imparted and you can get that anointing directly from the word. The light, remember, is the hiding place of his power. Directly from God. The wisdom, the unction that Solomon carried came directly from God through an encounter of a dream. There are impartations that I've received directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. I've shared my story with you. He was not a mortal man. Even though God has used men. But I've had encounters directly from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords himself. So you can have direct encounters. Number two. The second biblical way to receive the anointing is through impartation from the carriers of the anointing. Through impartation from the carriers. Go and buy from them that sell. The parable of the ten virgins. It is oil you are looking for. I have lamb, but it's not burning because there is no oil. And it says, go. If you go to the market and you are humble enough to search, if you really have the currency for purchase, find out those who sell it. 
the word sell it does not mean a manipulative way. It just means those who distribute it. The administrators of the grace and the anointing of the spirit. Are we together? Impartation. Second Kings 2 and verse 2. Two and verse two. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Next verse. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, listen carefully, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yes, I know. Hold your peace. These guys were, the next prophet should come out from them. They were in the school of the prophets, but they had gotten so familiar. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And they met a man who was a farmer, had no business being part of the prophetic lineage. But his hunger, he recognized that Elijah is not just a man. And he said, as far as your journey is concerned, I will go with you. The prophets had been trained enough to start seeing visions. So they could see that he would be lifted. But there was no hunger to receive. There are rules for impartation. Listen carefully. There are rules of engagement as far as impartation is concerned. I think this is where a lot of sincere people, especially ministers of the gospel, miss it. We just think because you have an encounter or contact with the career of a certain grace, you have received the anointing. No. You think so, but there are rules. And I want to share some of them with you. Number one. The first, the first requirement for receiving an impartation from a vessel that carries it is discernment. Discernment. If you can see me, he was looking at him already and said, no, if you can see me, if you discern that I'm not just a human being, but I represent a spiritual system of the prophetic, you will carry what you see. A man can have different levels of grace. The grace you discern is the grace that leads him to you. It's not the grace that is on him that comes to you. It's the grace that your discernment can pick. A man can have the grace for prayer, a grace for speed, a grace for favor, a grace for influence. Your discernment only sees the grace for influence. He lays hands on you and you think everything on him can came to you. It is the grace you discern that came to you. Are we together? Please learn this. The first rule for impartation is discernment. Shalakatabada. Father, this is my bishop and my pastor, but what is upon this man? Lord, reveal to me by the spirit. I just don't want it to be that I was invited to this church and I'm now a member of this church. Reveal to me. The disciples thought that Jesus was just Joseph's son and Mary's son. But at the Mount of Transfiguration, God opened their eyes to see who this Jesus was. And suddenly they saw his spirit man as bright as the sun and two strange entities were standing close to him. Moses and Elijah. Discernment. Number two. The second key that governs 
receiving impartation from careers of this grace is service. Write it down, please. Service. Serving God and serving that anointing with understanding. Gehazi was supposed to be the next prophet after Elisha. But even though he served, he did not serve with a pure heart. Listen, it is dangerous to come around the anointed and yet your heart is not pure. It will be better for you to go afar off because coming close to it. You see, how do I put it now? <clears throat> there are ways that God deals with us. He deals with us according to our levels of spiritual exposure. That means there are things when God has brought you to, he will not accept certain mistakes again because you have been exposed to too much. That was the reason why Moses did not enter Canaan. There was a dimension of God he had seen to not allow that level of unbelief and anger. And God said, Moses, I love you, but this is no longer for you. It's dangerous to be around the anointed and your heart is not pure because the anointing was designed to fight anything that is not God. So you will be surprised that you are around an anointed vessel serving but it's not with a pure heart and it's the day you met that pastor your life starts going down and you are wondering is it that this guy is taking my destiny? No. The impurity of your heart, the grace upon that life is fighting that impurity. It's true. Whereas you would have told a lie and gone scot-free when you were far off. Now you came close to an anointing and immediately you lied. That anointing detected it and it was designed to fight liars. So suddenly you find out that you are coming under a grave consequence. This thing I share with you is a very deep mystery. For some of you it will take until you have a ministry of your own, maybe in the future. And then you raise leaders. You will now say, this man of God said this. This is why you find out that certain people, they start serving in church. And they find out that while they are serving in church, they should be rising up. But it seems they are going down. Because while you are serving and cleaning the altar, these stupid people, if not just because I'm serving, and you don't know that the altar is a living thing, is hearing your conversation. It's true. This is my stupid head of department. This is my man of God's wife. This is my man of God. This is how they keep turning people into slaves in the house of God. Let me just do this thing, Joe. And the altar says, why? Do you, do you know the covenant that you are standing upon? It was ratified by blood. Why are you now doing this to your children? Why are you now doing this to your children's children? It's the reason why Judas could not spend the money he had. How could he spend the money? You believe what I'm sharing with you? This is not to get you scared. I know people have put some of these things to manipulate members into some wrong sense of self-worship. This, this is at all not what I'm talking about. I fear God too much to mislead you. But it's true. Go and read the story of Aaron and Miriam. That while they sat down and they were talking about Moses... Moses was not there. The Bible says God came down and he had them. And God said, what are you saying? Aaron, it was simply because of the cloak of his priesthood that that leprosy did not come on him. But it came upon Miriam. When Aaron removed his robe of priesthood, the leprosy landed. That means it didn't go. He was just waiting for him there. Read your Bible. You are Bible students. So, you may do certain things and yet the yoke is waiting for you. Even after 10 years, if the mercy of God does not speak for you, it will be waiting there. Hmm. 
someone was in Maria Woodward Eater's meeting and he sat down with a heart of sarcasm. He was just insulting the woman. Uh, I think it was Maria Woodward Eater. And then she looked at him and said, God, judge you. And his tongue protruded physically like a cancerous patient. Prayer warriors came. They don't mind that woman. We are praying. The same God we are serving. They prayed and prayed and prayed. Listen, the anointing only takes away what is not God that brought. If it is the devil that brought it, the anointing will gladly fight it. But when it did not come from Satan, you will need the mercy of God. These guys prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. Eventually, she got a group of people or they got a group of people to come and apologize to the woman of God. Sorry, this is ignorance. And she looked at him and just slapped the tongue and it went down, deflated in their presence there. Whereas other people were praying in the secret and God is watching saying, not so. God is a God of ordinances and protocol. God is giving you spiritual intelligence. Impartation from the carriers of this anointing. So you need discernment. Number two, service. Number three, honor. This is the third key that is responsible for receiving impartation from carriers of these vessels. What is honor? Honor is the discerning, the celebrating, and if need be, the rewarding of a divine vessel as touching the dimension of God given to them, discerning, the celebrating, and if need be, the rewarding. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. You cannot receive from a vessel you dishonor. It's amazing that most of the people who, dis, who desire the anointing on many people do not honor them. Many of you who listen to my teachings, you know that I am an advocate of honor for the body, for Jesus Christ, and for vessels. It is one of the reasons why the body of Christ has received me, because I do not fight the body of Christ. You desire the healing anointing, and you step into a healing program and you say, this man, now for you all. Is this all you know and all you've got? And now you don't have any result yourself. A man of God who is about to start ministry. Oh, look at all these guys. You say, ah, I need word. I need rema. And while you are saying that, there are voices. There are ears that are hearing. Remember, the throne of God is made of righteousness and justice. Hallelujah. Honor. I continue to teach people. Have the discernment. If you can look at this man of God and say, sir, whatever gave you the grace to stand for this long, serving the Lord, in spite of some areas in your life that miracles were on their way coming, you honor that grace, that grace for strength. It's called the spirit of might. It comes upon you and gives you the staying power through destiny. That while you are waiting for prophecy to come, you are not discouraged. You are standing strong. together yes I'm a product of many anointings you've heard me say and these have, anointings have come from a standpoint of profound honor in the secret and in the open first to God and to his vessels especially specific vessels that have been sent to my life sent or not I have that anointing that that regard but specific vessels sent to my life. It is, it, is, it is a profound regard with all of my heart. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. 
I've had the opportunity in my life to encounter uncommon vessels. And not all of them are people you know. Some of them are not on TV. In fact, it will, it will amaze you to know that the people you do not know um, is it fair to say I even more than the people you know as far as careers of mysterious graces and mantles are concerned I shared with you I don't know if I've shared it in this church or you may have heard it in my teaching I was preaching in a PFN conference in Kano and I'm ministering by the spirit mighty things are happening and all of a sudden I call this woman by the spirit and she comes with every sense of respect and honor and the Lord opens my eyes to see the spiritual state of this woman. And I was almost kneeling down to say, Madam, I'm the one who should receive prayer from you. She does not even speak English very well. Reads her house, her Bible. She finishes the Bible every 15 days. And here are the Joshua Selman standing to preach. And here is a woman. She's not on TV. You don't know her. She's not a celebrity. And so you fool yourself into thinking she does not have anything. Ah. Some of the people who have blessed me today are not on TV. I'm not the anointing for your destiny is your biological mother. And for 22 years, 30 years, 40 years, you eat her food every day and insult her. And she's just watching you. And one day God says, let me tell you why your destiny is the way it is. And opens your eyes and you say, God, I traveled to London 10 times looking for the anointing. Whereas that grace is right here. That grace fed me, nursed me, and yet I did not have discernment. You need discernment to say, Lord, show me the people in my life, not in the flesh. I know I married a wife from the day I married her. Quarter to shame. Help always comes for me. I just think I married a good woman. Till the day God opens your eyes. You married a covenant. That a grandfather spoke over his children. And said all of you as you go to your marital homes. Make sure the people you are part of rise. And that woman just came. You thought you married a beautiful woman. Whereas you introduced a covenant in your life. Are we together? My goodness, I have met anointed people, oh. I have met anointed people in my life. And I have discerned the graces that they carried. Mysteriously anointed people. People with depths and dimensions of intimacy with God that will make you go back and you sit down and it looks like you have never given your life to Jesus. Some of them are not preachers. Some of them are sincere people. Some of them are workers in church. Some of them are children. Children. That's why it takes discernment. When you are too big to discern, you are also too big to receive. You will be surprised that the Holy Ghost knows that there is a dimension of grace you need. And he keeps sending a small boy to you every time. This small boy comes to just hug you and greet you how are you uncle and in your maturity you beat him and say go away and yet the realm of the spirit is saying we are trying to connect you to a covenant this boy is small but he comes from some speakings there are speakings over a territory that he comes from and we are trying to push that boy one day you just look at the little boy and say what is it and he just says, God bless you, sir. Oh, take 20 naira and buy sweet and heaven claps for you. You connected with something you are not even aware of. All of a sudden, you find out that favor starts speaking in your life. It's one day God will say, do you know where this grace came from? He say, I think it's that big man of God that prayed for me. He say, let me open your eyes. And you will watch like a movie where that grace came from. That's why you must be discerning. Are we together? We are going to pray. You call this meeting the anointing. Let me finish something I started saying yesterday that I could not finish and we pray. I said that the anointing is in levels and also the anointing is in dimensions. Let me explain that. 
seeing that the anointing produces specific results. Look up, please. When we say you are anointed, it does not mean you can do everything. Are we together now? Yes. Anointings have a geography to their assignment. The healing anointing will not prosper you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. You can carry the healing anointing, but you will be surprised that while you are healing the sick, your finances and your destiny will never answer. Because there is a separate dimension of anointing in that area. You can have a very great grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication, and find out that you do not have access to insight and illumination. Because there is an anointing that opens the eyes to see. Are we together? Yes. You can have the grace for favor and yet not have the grace for influence. You find out that people help you. You can easily write a book but there will be nobody to receive of that grace and bless you. There are people today who are not necessarily the best in as much as we know the best. But the graces upon their lives speak. And when you look at them, you are wondering, so what is really the wow factor here? It's because of the grace that is upon them. That means that just because you are anointed, listen carefully, does not mean you have everything. It is now your responsibility to discern what dimension of anointing is in my life. I have seen by the grace of God that the prophetic is in my life. But I have seen that this scripture, I open the Bible and I don't seem to understand anything. That means there is a grace for illumination. So when you are receiving, you are not just saying, Amen. Uh -uh. Your spirit is connecting to specific dimensions. It is your responsibility to walk with the Holy Ghost and say, I have been given, for instance, a ministry. What are the graces that I need for that ministry? I need wisdom. I need favor with men. Are we together now? I need influence for people to hear my voice. I need access to the spirit and the grace for prayer. I need the grace for the miraculous. So when you come for a meeting like this, you are not just receiving anointing blindly. Your spirit is hinged on specific dimensions. When there is clarity, reception is easy. Give us this day. What should I give you? Food. No, sir. Our daily bread. If you want water, ask water. If you want bread, ask bread. Don't say give me any day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. It's one powerful lesson that I learned walking the anointing. When I saw Benny Hinn, I desired certain specific graces. Before talking of receiving any anointing and any impartation, I took out time to study him as a spiritual system. What are the graces that God invested in this man? Where did it come from? I studied Smith Wigglesworth. I studied Lester Sumrall. I studied all these men and women of the spirit. What are the graces that they carry? So that your heart will connect to it. Are you blessed? We are going to pray. It truly is my desire that from this morning's service that not only will it be that you came and met a powerful man of God but that your heart is open to receive something. You know, there is a level of concentration and focus and hunger it takes to receive from God. Many people are too distracted and careless and casual. If the grace comes upon me, that's fine. No. He said, if you can see me, and he saw a portal opened, and chariots of horses coming, he said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof, and something left the realm of the spirit and came upon a man physically. And he got up and demonstrated immediately 
that it had come upon him. The prophets themselves attested to that fact. He said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. Hallelujah. Years ago, I met a man of God who was going to pray for me and he spoke something that was very disturbing. He said, may God create a problem that only you can solve. I said, ah, this kind of prayer. I, I don't like this as my, my very nature. I don't like to outshine, to do no. It's not, I like people collectively. Let my joy is when everybody is also rejoicing. So you can imagine how I felt with that prayer. I just felt, ah, this, am I ready for this kind of thing? No, I'm not prepared. But he had prayed, he had prayed. I'm praying for you that within the few minutes we have, that God will grant you grace to discern. Listen to me. The Bible says, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. That means as touching that office will receive, he says, a prophet's reward. He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. The Holy Ghost put this program together, listen to me, because there are dimensions of unctions and graces that our destinies require. And for many of us, you have been grounded a long time in that dimension because that grace has not come upon you yet. And if your heart is open, my brothers and my sisters, you can receive something in this service and you can go back home rejoicing. I found it. I got it. And your situations and circumstances will know that you have it. There is a grace for territory that is responsible for not just influence, but is responsible for making God reveal himself as a God of portions to you. In every territory, there is your portion and your allocation, but there is a grace that brings it to you. Rehoboth, God has given me my own space. Otherwise, you will continue to live at the mercy of whatever it is that people do and give you. But there is a grace that gives you to your own place. There is a grace. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I see angelic activities here. Literally, I'm not joking. I'm seeing just the angels of the Lord walking. This is what is causing some of these things you are seeing. It's not only them. I'm seeing it move from row to row, front to the back, outside. You don't have to stand. I'm seeing just like angels doing, bringing things out and bringing things in. This is what the Lord is showing me. The Bible says when you come to Mount Zion, there are many things that happen. There are an innumerable company of angels. Remember I told you yesterday that if you have this thing, you have it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. There are no assumptions. No assumptions in the spirit. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, the Bible says, therefore God but even thy God had given you an oil of gladness and the assignment of that oil is to make you above your fellows. It's a grace for influence. It will cause any territory to hear your voice. These things are graces. So in the next few minutes, forgive me, I know that we've taken a bit of time, but I'm going to give you five minutes to cry before the God of heaven you know the specific dimensions. You are in ministry. You are praying for your family. Think about your children while you pray and let it be from the depth of your heart. Father, this is the moment where I receive this engracing. If someone pray, lift your voice. Those online, make sure you participate in the prayer from the depth of your hunger. Cheers. 
Talk to the God of your salvation. Please pray. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Have a pray. This is the place where my life is changed. Visit me, O oh God. Turn my life around. Let me become another man. The overflows, are you praying? Pray from the depth of your heart. morning service. One last prayer. Every dimension of grace that your heart pants for, I like you to cry it in prayer and say, Father, if these graces are available for the sake of your kingdom, for the efficiency of the work you have committed in my hands, I open up my spirit man to draw and receive. Lift your voice and pray.
Gata Salanda Gata. Immersed in his presence, someone's destiny is changing. This is an encounter you will never forget. Hallelujah. This, this is how men are made in this kingdom. This is how champions arise in this kingdom. In the name of Jesus. I want to release the grace for the prophetic in this place. There are men and women, there needs to be an accelerated rise of authentic prophetic voices within this city. Men with balance and love and power and accuracy. And in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, I stand by the privilege of the election of grace and I pray Spirit of the living God, there are men and women in this season of revival that you are igniting with the fire of the prophetic. Lord, wherever they are, online and in this place, as this eagle moves across in this room, I pray in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, let the spirit of prophecy rest upon them. Right now at the count of three, in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Help them. Take that grace. I ignite it in the name of Jesus. Spring up all wells, prophetic wells. Shila Kataba, as I hear the word of the Lord, may your Let's be open to that ministry of the prophetic by the Spirit, by the Spirit, by the Spirit, by the Spirit, the seeing eye, the hearing ear, I release upon you, the seeing eye, the hearing ear, I release upon you.
I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. I will sing unto the to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea there is a grace for massive deliverance that is coming upon someone that's why I began to sing that song listen when you receive this grace that anyone that is under siege who comes under your spiritual circumference except God is not God that that power will be broken from their lives I pray for you Lord I don't know where they are but I'm hearing the number 34 in the name of Jesus inside and outside at the count of three may that fire come upon you to set the captives free one two three take that grace that grace that your mouth becomes a sword in the realm of the spirit piercing through the darkness Hello, him, Madonna. Hello, him, Madonna. The unction that was on Esther that gave her a standing with the king, that anointing is coming on someone, is a grace that will set you up in the palaces of destiny. Take that grace now. Take her, help her, help her. Help that lady, hold her, please, so she doesn't enjoy herself. There is a God who sets up princes and puts them in positions of royalty. Help us lady this place. Hello, Madonna, I say. Hello, Madonna. Let me impart the grace for prayer upon you. A prayerless people is truly a powerless people. I'm not talking of need-driven prayer. I'm talking of men who have mastered the protocol of the altar. Hea shala sabrante katos kraketesh kalabaruda satai that a grace can come upon your spirit man. The grace that will cause you to pray. The quickening of the spirit that empowers you to call upon his name. I know by the spirit that the prayer altar of many people is down. It's true. I see it already. But I pray for you. The fire. The 
the fire that must land upon your life, giving you the grace to pray. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to fail. At the count of three, I pray for you as a I pray for you, body of Christ, the grace for prayer, let it rest upon you right now. The spirit of prayer and supplication, the grace to travel in the secret place, the grace to fast, the grace to pray. Take that grace now. Take that fire now. My glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, you're the lifter up of my head. To bring them out again, I think here it's already crowded. So wherever they are, just guide them there. But please, this prayer I'm about to pray, be an usher, whether or not there are ushers walking. There's only so much they can do. There is a grace for speed. It's true. Listen, many of us are already in a position of disadvantage. Either by reason of age or by reason of slowness in understanding. Or by reason of the timing of your giving your life to Christ. There needs to be an agency in the spirit that can give you acceleration in life. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. I want to release that grace. There are businesses and there are destinies that at the rate you are moving, you may not be able to do much for the kingdom. I'm saying hold them because people will start running by the spirit. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. We are limited here. In the name of Jesus, the grace that has brought speed to men and destinies, taking men from positions of obscurity, sometimes overnight. As I hear me, by the rod of a higher priesthood, I release that grace upon you now. Speed, speed, speed to your destiny. Speed to your destiny. I command speed. No more delay. No more delay. Ten years in one year. Spiritual speed. Financial speed. Intellectual speed. Ministerial speed. Parakatos Koparita. Hallelujah. Anyone here called Barry, whether for you or for your loved ones, you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I stand by the God of heaven and I speak to you according to the time of life. By this time next year, you are carrying your children. Help them please. By this time next year, you are carrying your children. Let me pray for the sick. Please lay your hands. We have but a few minutes. Lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just touch your chest. You are the covenant king. Now I like you to believe as I pray. 
and agree with me in the name of Jesus. 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 Right now, I rebuke every devil of infirmity. The spirits at the back of the illnesses, the diseases of God's people, I declare be gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak to your body from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet. Be healed now. Be healed now. Every growth in your body, every lump around your body, it disappears now. Every faulty blood condition, wrong genotype, change now. In the name of Jesus. Please believe what you are hearing. Lump, breast lump. Be healed now. Be healed now. Conditions in the chest. The Lord is healing it right now. In the name of Jesus. Anyone here with partial or total deafness, I command that ear to be opened now. Every blind eye, partially or totally, be opened now in the name of Jesus. Every bone condition, in the name of Jesus, I bring the life and the power of the Spirit. Be made whole now. There's someone being healed of pile, severe pile. The power of God is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord is showing me a lady. You are not pregnant, but I see that once and again, it's like you are lactating, but it's not like you are pregnant carrying a child. In the name of Jesus, that occurrence comes to an end over your life now. Two weeks ago, you saw me in your dream and you saw me ministering to you. In the name of Jesus, I minister in the physical as you saw. And the impartation that you received, may my God confirm it now. The impartation we receive, may my God confirm it now. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Please help. Back, back. You have a challenge with your back very severe pain around your spine area right now the power of God is touching you I rebuke that pain right now in the name of Jesus there is a lady here you have dreams and in that dream you see yourself as a man in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is revealing this to me I declare that every spirit that wants to exchange your destiny I curse that spirit now In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, hotness, hotness around your body, severe heat around your body, I declare you are free right now. You are free right now. Now whether I mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus I speak to you and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit be healed. And anyone here under any kind of demonic siege, holding your life, holding your destiny, 
holding everything that belongs to you. I stand in agreement with your bishop and your father and I declare by the Spirit of God that it leaves you now forever. Everything in your life that God has begun and the devil has vowed that it will never be completed. God is Alpha, but he's also Omega. So if he started, there is a finisher's anointing. I pray for you. Every project and everything you are involved with, whether it's your academics, whatever it is, that he that begun this good work, that he's faithful to bring it to completion, may the finisher's anointing rest upon you now. believe anyone here trusting God for a job or any family here that there has been a siege of joblessness let that siege be broken now I want to rebuke the plague of death if there is death over anybody's head that you will not finish this year and they will say survive by I stand by my God and I declare whoever does that beat may they fall into it and anyone that says over his dead body for you and your family to rise may that prayer be answered now Can I pray for your finances? I know that the pandemic has brought a lot of economic turmoil to the nations. Restoration is in the office of the prophetic according to scripture. He said by this time tomorrow. Believe in the Lord your God, he says. You have your businesses, your career, and whatever you do in exchange, your value that you give, and that is wonderful. Continue to be diligent. The Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. There is honor in diligence. But then in addition to your diligence, there is always the backing of the spirit. And I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe. Listen, can I tell you this? Believe me when I tell you it does not take time for God to lift men. It's just the understanding of people. You can remain in a position forever. Whereas with the sincerity of your heart being open, with one prophetic word, God can not only locate you, but settle you. Let me pray for anyone interested here. I give you three months from today. I stand in the name of Jesus. I call upon my God who is the helper of men. Within three months, in the name of Jesus, may my God settle your finances. Believe it, don't doubt. Believe it, don't doubt. Believe it, don't doubt. In the name of Jesus, I say it again, Asaba. I bring you the word of prophecy. I bring you the word of the Lord. I shift systems and structures and I declare, may my God say to you. Hear me? And for all of you who have lost money, you lost money in businesses, you lost opportunities, and right now you're wondering, how will I finish this year? For some of you, December 31st will not reach without you sharing your testimony. I mean what I'm saying. Let it be yours in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here due for promotion and your promotion is good for the kingdom and is good for the advancement of the purposes of God. But the devil for some reason 
is insisting that you are kept down. I prophesy to you, whoever is sitting on what is yours, I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn until it gets to your turn. Please believe these are not empty words. These are not a preacher shouting. This is creation happening over your destiny. I know we are not in a minister's conference yet, but I'm aware that there are other servants of God here. I pray for you and the work that God has given you. Whatever has found that your work will not grow, I stand by the God of heaven because everything that is alive grows. Therefore, I speak to the work given to you. Grow to a new level. Hear me. There is a cause that I want to break now. We're rounding up. There is a wicked spirit in Africa that does not allow everybody within a family rise. It's only one person that will rise and the rest will keep putting pressure on him and his family. It's a wicked spirit. Anyone here under the sound of my voice that the devil wants to make you have to wait for someone before you eat. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit. I curse that altar. I curse that spirit. I curse that altar. Hallelujah. Someone is praying and say, Apostle, pray for me. I need direction in my life. I'm confused right now. Should I remain in Asaba? Should I go abroad? Listen, divine location is important for your success. It's a dangerous thing to be where God has not assigned for you. There are people today when the devil wants to bless them, he will give them a seeming breakthrough out of the placement of God. You need to know where God wants you to be part time. Just because God wanted you there yesterday, does not mean he still wants you there today. This is a prophetic word for someone or for a family. I pray for you. Whatever it takes for God to reveal to you where he wants you to be, whether it's a dream, whether it's a vision, whether it's the prophetic, I pray, receive supernatural direction now for the next level of your life. Receive supernatural direction for the next level of your life. Receive supernatural direction. Listen, please don't joke with what I just prayed. When you go back home, pray it. Many of us, the reason why we are not rising is not because God is not with us. It's because we are not in our divinely ordained place. And Isaac sowed in that land, Bishop, and received that same year. Geography is important as far as seasons are concerned in our lives. Jesus knew when it was time to go to the other side. He knew when it was time to return back to Nazareth. He knew when it was time to go to Jericho. Divine placement. Two more prayer points. There are people here saying, Apostle, I don't know what my life is about. I just keep escorting others in destiny. Has God called me to ministry? Has God called me to career? Has God called me to help and uphold the hands of others in ministry? I need to pray for you. Listen, living a wasted life is a terrible thing. That the only thing growing in your life is your age. You are just growing older, but there is nothing constructive that you are spending your destiny on. And by this prayer, I want to also the opportunity and kill the spirit of irresponsibility that is in the life of many young people. I say this respectfully but there are many people for you. God is said, hey, wake up. Wake up to a life of responsibility. Not gisting around, loitering from morning till night, wasting your destiny for nothing. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The power of vision, the grace for vision, to know what your destiny is about 
and to stay through and focus on it. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Now listen to the last prayer point. For some of you, you have truly paid your price. You have worked on yourself. But the grace to give you visibility. You see that? If it's in ministry, sincerely, there are some of you with all humility, you have worked on yourself. You've worked on character. You've worked on your word content. You've worked on your prayer life, on leadership. It's just for that grace to announce you. You write books and nobody's there to read. You organize conferences, nobody's placing a demand on that grace. You pay your price to build a shop or a mall and nobody comes. Listen, it's one thing to be called, but like a tree, your joy is when people discern what God is doing and come to honor the workings of the Spirit in your life. There is a grace that gives visibility. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. There is a season in every man's life called the season of appearing. And Isaiah 61 says to appoint unto them that morning in Zion. You can set a date for their rising. Let me speak to as many here who have truly paid their price in the secret. In prayer, in fasting, you have built yourself. Some of you, you are ready to see the king. You have done your assignment under the custody of Haggai. I declare by the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, the angels that announce man, the grace that announce man, may that grace come upon your life, come upon your ministry, come upon your business, come upon your family, come upon your career, come upon your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Finally, let me pray for the members of this church. Now, I've prayed for everyone sincerely, and I love you. But there are men and women who have sacrificed their resources. When Bishop was sharing with me some of the sacrifices, and I was even broken when I was told some of you who are not even members of this church, you came and said, look, it's not about church. And you put your hand together. This is the spirit of the body of Christ. I salute all who have done that. But I need to pray for the tireless men and women in this assembly, whether those who are here or those who are connected to this spiritual family, who have labored in ways great and small to see that this conference is a success. I have to pray for you. My Bible says a worker is worthy, deserving of his wages. In the name of Jesus, all who are under the grace and the leadership of our precious bishop and his wife. I join faith with him and I bless you. You are blessed and you cannot be cursed. I declare for all of your givings, all of your sacrifices, and that which you have done, the eye of God that has seen it, that same eye will direct rewards and favor towards you. You will not create a platform for the lifting of others and go down. In the name of Jesus. For as many of you who have labored to invite people going around the city to announce glad tidings. Because of you today, people have been healed, delivered and blessed. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, rise to a new dimension. May my God surprise you. He will take away shame and reproach from your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I know that our bishop will come back to say, by his grace, I'm still around. God has granted grace. We have, um, not, not here again, but we have um, additional conferences this evening. Uh, even though that is limited, I'm, I'm sorry, I think it's, it's, it's a restricted conference. But then, for some of you, this may be our last encounter for now and for this year. In the name of Jesus, everything you desire that I didn't speak about, I declare to you by the Spirit of God, let it become yours. 
And whatever you have seen in the life of your bishop, God's servant, that you desire, I join my faith with him. I release it to your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those that Bishop announced earlier on before I came up, it's true. He just, I kept, uh, to tell you honestly, um, I kept discerning his burden to reach out to the ministers of the gospel and, you know, not to have a conference like this, especially at this Kairos time and not have even if it's just 30 minutes.